She's following a baby.
service. And so your victory trophy is dust. So this morning, what we all need to do is grab our trophy. Get some pot. Spin out a little bit if you got to. But you need to just wipe it off. Wipe off that dust. And let it shine. Let your victory shine this morning because he is risen. Amen.
And the great thing is, we can raise a hallelujah as long as we want. I don't care what the schedule says. Sorry, Pastor. But it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So if you are here, we also want to let you know that after service, we're going to have hot dogs, hugs, and the hopping. Come on now, hot dogs, hugs, and the hopping. And it's going to be happening behind the black curtains. We've got some games that we have for the kiddos. We're going to be having hot dogs, water, different things. Uh, and when you play the games, you're also going to get eggs. And all the kids said amen. Amen. So we're going to have a really good time. Uh, aren't you glad that our kids have, a, have some people that are loving on them this morning? Telling them about the risen king. Amen. That's what I read of us for you. And it's good to be able to just have that time of worship. If the ushers would, come on forward, please. We're going to pass the offering real quick. Yes. Oh, yeah. One, that's why we have a pastor. Uh, when you fill out your Connect cards, if you would, turn them into our Connect spot. We have a gift that we want to give you guys uh, for being here. Uh, turn it in the card. So we just have a little gift. The Connect spot's located in the lobby. And it literally says Connect spot. So I think we can all handle that. All right, we're going to pray real quick over this offering. And then we're going to go into worship again. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. And Lord, I thank you that today is the day, Lord. Today is the day that our lives are changed and that we're never the same. But Lord, we just pray over this offering. Lord, we give with a cheerful heart, Lord. We give with everything within us because we serve a risen King. And Lord, as, as we give this offering, bless it, Lord. Uh, expand the kingdom of heaven, Lord, through this offering, Lord. Let us be a blessing so that we can bless others. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you will, draw your eyes to the screen, please.
Amen. 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 Come on. Now. I need to do a quick poll this morning. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. But I want you to raise your hand if you've ever had a personal encounter with Jesus. Now I want you to raise your hand if you need a personal encounter with Jesus. God is so funny. He, he died for all, right? But he did die for just you as well. Just you. And he wants to meet with you personally this morning and every morning, every single morning. I want to tell you a quick story. Last weekend, I got to enjoy a women's retreat with several hundred women, several hundred Christian women from out in Winnowell into the with the beautiful forest, and we just got to worship that weekend and experience and hear from the Lord. And something happened to me in one of the worship sessions that had never happened before. And I felt Jesus holding me. I felt so close to Him, as if He was right there holding my hand. As I was down on my knees, crying in laughter, Jesus was just right there. And he spoke to the inmost part of me that had been longing for that personal touch from him. For years, I've been dealing with depression, and I just couldn't get out from under this cloud. But joy broke through, y'all. He was there. And he held me. And he just spoke over me, the joy of the Lord is restored. The joy of the Lord is restored. The joy of the Lord is restored. And I want you to know that the promises of God are true for you. Not just for many, but for you personally. So as we continue worship this morning, I want you to bow your head. You can get on your knees if you want. There's space in the back if you just need to get some space and be alone with Jesus. There's some space up here in the wings. Don't feel like you have to be confined to your room. God wants to meet with you. And you tell him your heart this morning. He knows what you need, but he loves when you talk to him. You tell him your heart. Let's love on Jesus.
gosta.
pay a debt that I could not pay. I thank you for sending Jesus to make a way that I could not make. Lord, we just worship you this morning. On this Resurrection Sunday, Father, we give it all to you. Everything we have, everything we think we are, Father, we just turn it over to you this morning. Father, you're truly an amazing God. Hallelujah, Father. Lord, we worship you, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Come on. Don't you look good this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Y'all do look good this morning. I just want to let you know. I don't care what your wife says about you this morning. You look good. Come on. Come on. I don't know about y'all, but man, that was. I could have just stayed right there the rest of the day. Come on, I could have just stayed right there the rest of the day. That was, that was right where I needed to be this morning. Amen? Come on now. Man, Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday, the day that we celebrate that Jesus, come on, raised from the dead. There's, you know, there's not another God. There's not another God raised out of the grave. Everybody else's grave is full today for Jesus. Come on. Everybody else is full today. I, I don't know if y'all are here this morning. Y'all here? Come on. Everybody else is in the grave of Jesus. Come on. That's exciting this morning. Hallelujah. That is exciting this morning. Hey, can I add some value to your life this morning? Can I do that this morning? Can I add some value to you? Because you know that you are valuable to God. You know that He loved us enough that He was willing to die. Jesus was willing to die. You know, it says that when he was on the cross, when they hung him on the cross, and he was there, and it says for three hours it went dark, God had turned his back upon Jesus because he was holding all of our sins. You know, God can't look upon sin. Jesus had took all of our sins upon him, and for three hours God had turned his back. And I can only imagine the pain for three hours, knowing the suffering that was happening on the cross. And you know, and then on the cross, Jesus said, he said, Lord, he said, I give it up. He said, I give it up. See, they didn't take it from you. Come on. They didn't take it from you. You can't take something from somebody that doesn't belong to him. Come on. They couldn't take his life. He gave it to them. He gave it to them for us on that cross. You know, Joseph went to, went to, went to uh, Pilate and he said, hey, can I, he pleaded with me, can I have can I have Jesus' body? Can I go bury him? And it happened so soon. He died so early. Pilate was like, is he already dead? And he had to check with his people. He said, is he already dead? He said, yeah, he's already dead because he gave it up for son. The Bible says that he descended into the depths and into hell that he took the keys from. You see, Adam had turned the keys over to him in the garden. He turned the keys over to Satan. But Jesus, come on. Uh, one man's transgression was sin entered into by another man's. Come on. Are we set free? And this morning is the morning that we celebrate that freedom. I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. Come on. I need to set free. I don't know about y'all this morning, and I may not be preaching even I'm preach myself this morning. Because I need some freedom. Come on, I needed some freedom. Things in my life that didn't need to be in my life. Come on, some depression that was there that didn't need to be there. Some anxiety that didn't need to be there. Come on, but Jesus paid that price. The lights come on. Woo, come on. Hallelujah. You know, they went to the tomb. The ladies went to the tomb that morning. And I don't think ladies get enough credit in the church. Come on. Come on. The ladies are the ones who went to the tomb that morning. And two angels there said, hey, uh, he, he ain't here. What do you mean? He ain't here. He's risen. But you know, the thing is, is that after that, and after Peter and Jonathan ran to the grave, after the ladies went back and told him, they looked and said, yep, he ain't there. <laughs> Come on. Like they need some confirmation, right? 
ran back and said, yep, he's not there. But you know they still didn't believe him? You know they thought somebody had stolen the body? You know, in our lives today, are there things that God's doing in our lives that we don't believe in? These are things that He's resurrecting. Things that He's killing off. Yet we don't believe. We hang on to that depression. We hang on to the anxiety. We hang on to the sin that's in our life because we don't believe Jesus can do that. Why do we hang on to it? Got a question for you. Are you worthy? Are you worthy of what God has for you? You know, a lot of people may say that, that I'm not worthy. That I, I'm not worthy of what God has for me. That I have too much. That I do too much. That maybe you should see me on Friday nights. I'm not worthy. You know, there's other people that will say, the man, uh, I just, I just got to get things right first. I, I've just got to change some things in my life first. Maybe you've been divorced. Once, twice, three times, four times. Maybe that's holding you from knowing that you're worthy. Maybe you had a business fail and, and, and you just you wanted to support the gospel and you wanted to do some things, but that business just failed. And you said that I'm not worthy of what God has for me. Maybe you were hurt as a child. Maybe there's still some pain that you're holding on to. Maybe there's things in your life that you say that I'm not worthy. You know, Romans 10, 9 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Just to let you in on a secret, none of us are. None of us are worthy. None of us could pave the way. None of us could make the way for us to go. None of us within ourselves and of ourselves, as we look to ourselves, we can't get there. 2 Corinthians 3. I want to read a few verses here this morning. And this is the New Life version. And I like going to this version every once in a while. But I want to read a few verses. We're going to start at 3 and we're going to go to 6. And it says this. It says, are we making it sound as if we think we are so important? Other people write letters about themselves. Do we need to write such a letter to you? You are our letter. You are written in our hearts. You are known and read by all of you. You are as a letter from Christ written by us. You are not written as others are written. You are written in human hearts by the Spirit of the living God. We can say these things because our faith in God through Christ. For we know that we are not able in ourselves to do any of this work. God makes us able to do these things. God is the one who made us preachers of the new way of worship. This new way of worship is not the law. It is the Holy Spirit. The law brings death, but the Holy Spirit gives life. Your life. He said, do, I need, do we need to write letters about ourselves? He said, and you are our letter. Connect Church, you are the letter of Connect Church. Your lives that you live and the way that you go, the way that you are, is what's writing it. In and of ourselves, it says that we're not worthy. That we could not do this. And I love this verse. In the verse 5 it says, God makes us able to do these things. You know, you're not written like others are written. Come on. You're not written like others are written. 
I don't think y'all heard me. You're not written like others are written. Your life is different. Your life means something when you follow Christ. Your life is a, is a show of what's happening. How we live our life, what we do. First Peter, First Peter two it says this. It says, but you are a chosen group of people. Look at your neighbor and say you're chosen. Look at the other one and say you are too. You're a chosen group of people. You are the king's religious leaders. You are a holy nation. I like this part. You belong to God. Come on. You belong to God. He has done this for you so that you can tell others how God has called you out of darkness and into His light. And at one time, I'm going I'm to I'm say this for me. Come on. At one time, you were people of no use. But he doesn't leave it there, man. He could have just stopped with me. Come on. At one time, you had no use. He goes on to say, says, now you are a people of God. Come on, now you are a people of God. You belong to God. At one time, you did not have loving kindness. Now you have God's loving kindness. Now is the time. Now is the way. Now we need to do something that we've never done before. Now we need to say the things that we've never said before. Now we need to testify like we've never testified before. Why? Because he got up. Come on, he come out of the grave. He made a way. He gave us victory. How would you like it? Come on now. I used to play sports. My sons play sports. I come Josh back here, man. How would you like it if somebody just said, ah, we're just going to give you the victory? It, it's just yours. Just go ahead. You, you don't even have to fight for it today. Just take the trophy home. Oh, come on. Like you wouldn't do it. Come on now. He gave us the victory. He said, here, you want it? It's yours. Come on now, baseball season right now, right? Come on. Walk off home run in the night, right? Come on now. The devil thought he had it down. The devil thought I can defeat God because he's in man form. I can hang him on a cross and I can put him in a grave. But what he didn't realize is that the power that was inside of him that pulled him out of the grave. He said, I got one more hit left. And I'm coming back. Hebrews 10.10 10. For we have been set apart as holy because Jesus Christ did what God wanted Him to do. Do you know God wanted Him to sacrifice Himself for you? Do you know why you were created? Come on, do you know why you were created? Why God created us? He created us to worship Him Willing. You were created to worship willingly. You know, the angels were created to worship also, but it's something they had to do. But he said, I, I need a people. I need somebody that's willing to do it because they want to. Well, not because we have to. Not because we have to, but because we want to. Hebrews, we're going to continue on. Hebrews 10, 11 and 12. It says, every day each priest performed his religious duties. He offered the same type of sacrifice again and again. Yet these sacrifice could never take away sin. However, and I love words like that. Come on. However, you know, he could have left us right there. He could have said, you got to 
You got to sacrifice goats and doves for the rest of your life to cover something, but not really take it away. He could have left us right there, but he threw a however in here. Come on, this chief priest, Jesus, made one sacrifice for sin, and this sacrifice lasts forever. When Jesus died on the cross. And his blood was shed on that altar. And it ran down. And he raised from the dead after descending into hell. And said, devil, you've got something that belongs to me. You've got some keys that were handed over to you. And they really weren't supposed to be. And then he rose. Come on. He rose up. The final time. No more shedding of any other blood. No more having to sacrifice anything else. Because the one sacrifice that lasts forever. Now he holds the honored position. One next to God the Father. On the heavenly throne. My message today. Introduction. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like that whole brother. JB already preaching this morning. And Kirk did a good job, man. Christy testified. I mean, come on. We have got an amazing crew here. Come on. And I just want to add a little bit more value to you. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, I find it interesting what he did that day. The day that he rose, you know, he stayed 40 days before he. Ascended, but the, the day that he rose, I find that interesting. What he did. Got up, rolled the stone away. Come on, little sunshine. Come out of the grave. Saw the ladies on the way. Come on. And then he did something very interesting. I don't know about you, but. I might have done something different. But then again, I'm not God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a good place to say it. Never mind. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> he meets up with two people walking down the road. You see, the, the believers at that time knew that the promise was on the third day, right? Come on, there's something magical about that third day. There's something special about that third day. And Jesus said, hey, they're going to they're gonna kill me, but I'm going to raise what they didn't understand. And so that third day, when he rose up, he took a walk. Seven miles with two people. Two people that we have never heard about before or again in the Bible. Two people that would seem very insignificant within the span of the Bible. I find that interesting. You know, a lot of times we think, come on, we think that Jesus is going to show up to the ones we think are special. To the ones that we see. To the big preachers, come on. He thinks that's who God's coming to. But really, this, I, maybe this doesn't he walked with two people that were believers that get this that left on the third day he says on the third day something's going to happen Mason and they left on the third day to go home and you know they left after the ladies had come back and said hey um so the tomb's empty, and we don't know where he's at. And then Peter, and he says the one that Jesus loves, that's John talking about himself, come on. Don't ever talk about yourself, do you? Don't ever tell somebody how good you are, third person, come on now. And they ran, and they come back, and they said, yep, yeah, he's not there. And these two people, 
people, and, and we're, we only get the name of one of them, Cleopas, and, and scholars say that the other one could be his wife, brother, mother, father, we don't know. But they leave. They leave on the third day. Couldn't even make it. They leave on the third day. But they find themselves walking with somebody. Turn with me to Luke. You've got your Bible. Luke 24. Luke 24, 13. It says this. It says the same day two of his followers were going to the town of Emmaus. And it was about a two-hour walk from Jerusalem and from some other things we find that it is a seven-mile walk. They talked of all the things that had happened. While they were talking together, Jesus himself came and walked along with them. And something kept their eyes from seeing who he was. You know, a lot of times we look for Jesus in destinations. You know, they look for him on the cross. And then they went and look for him in the grave. But a lot of times he's not in our, the destinations. A lot of times he's in the deviations. You see, they were supposed to stay in Jerusalem where the promise was. But they said, I, there's nothing here. He's not there. I'm going home. So they deviated from what they were told to do. And they found themselves walking with Jesus. Have you ever deviated from something in your life? You ever found yourself wondering, why am I doing this? I think I need to be doing something else. You know, I stepped out of ministry for 10 years. Because I felt like I needed to do that. I felt like I had something else that I wanted to do. So I deviated. But you know what? Jesus was walking with me. I learned things through that time of pulling out of something that my heart absolutely loved to do. I learned things because Jesus walked with me. So I encourage you, if you're in a deviation, know that Jesus is still with you. Verse 17, it says this. He said to them, I, found this, I don't know if y'all, I don't know how y'all read the Bible. I just, I find just a few things funny. So that's how I read it and I'm going to bring it up. So, he said to them, um, what you talking about? Come on, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God who created all, the God who knows all, walks up and said, uh, what you talking about? And they looked at him. They said, it says there, it says, they stood still and looked sad. And one of them, this is, this is where Cleopas comes in. He had to pipe up. He said, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? Come on. Who has not heard of the things that have happened here these days? And get this. Jesus goes, what things? <laughs> What you talking about? I don't know about y'all, but I've had Jesus come up to me sometimes and go, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, Lord. <laughs> come on. Am I the only one? Come on. When we live our lives, when we live for Christ, sometimes when we deviate and we get off course, Jesus comes to us and says, uh, what you doing? And then when we try to explain, 
Are you the only one that hasn't heard what's going on? God, do you not see my life? Do you not understand what I'm going through? Have you not seen the crucifixion that I'm being put through at work? Have you not seen how much my boss hates me? Do you not know that my sister just walked out? Do you not know that I just got divorced? God, do you not understand what's going on? He goes, what things? What things? I find that funny. Sorry. He knows. Come on. And sometimes he just wants us to get it out. And they answer. The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, I just see his expressions. Let's see how they start this right here. Look at this. I want you to notice something. The next two words. What are they? He was. He was. I've already given up. Because he was. I can't accomplish my dream. Because he was. I have to have this divorce because he no longer is. They reference him in a past tense. Well, we thought he was. He was the great one who spoke for God. He did powerful works and spoke powerful words in the sight of God and people. I can see Jesus got there. And the religious leaders and the leaders and the people gave him over to be killed and nailed him to a cross. What's the next two words? We were hoping. He was the one who was going to make the Jewish people free. But it was three days ago. Seems like he told them what was going to happen in three days. Seems like he said, yeah. You ever given up? You ever given up and just thought, I thought it was going to happen by now. I thought my dream was going to happen by now. I thought I would have kids by now. I thought that I would be married by now. I thought that my marriage would be better by now. And we tend to back off. And we tend to look at God as He was. Instead of He is. They saw Him as a He was. Instead of He is. You know, a lot of times... We look for God in the big mirrors instead of the small, minute places in our life. You know, we think because there's not been this great miracle in our life and the heavens didn't open up and God didn't reach down and say, what's up face to face? Come on. That it's not ever going to happen. We think that because it's been a little bit of time that we can't ever reach our goals. We can't ever do what we're going to do. Things just aren't progressing the way that I don't. So God must have been a past tense. But He's not a past tense. You know, a lot of times we look at our life and we look at the mess that it's in. And we look at the things that, you know, I, I, I've messed my life up. I've stepped out, I stepped out of ministry for 10 years. I didn't think I'd ever go back in. I didn't think God would ever use me again. God, I left your ministry. I left what you had for me.
I have great expectations. I've had great expectations in my life. I've wanted certain things to happen. But you know what the problem was? I have the shortest. Short attention. You know, if we really want things to happen with God, we've got to stretch our attention span. We've got to know that the things that He wants to do in us may not happen tomorrow. They may not happen the next day. They may not happen in a month, in a year, in five years, and for me, in ten years. But I promise you, if you have something burning in your heart, and I promise you, if it's something God's put inside of there, that it will happen. Don't give up on it. Don't walk away. Don't take a seven-mile trip the other direction just because you thought it was going to happen. Verse 22, it says, And some of the women of our group, and this is, this is where they tell about everything that happens, says, Some women of our group, uh, they have surprised us and made us wonder. They went to the grave early this morning. They did not find his body. They came back saying this. That they seen angels in a special dream who said, guess what? He's alive. I kind of think that if somebody had seen an angel and said, you know what? It's still alive, that I probably would believe them. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> Some of those who were with us went to the grave and found it. As the women said. But they didn't see him. Well, they didn't say they saw him. They said it was empty. I find that ironic. I find that last statement ironic. What does it say? They didn't see him. Does anybody else see why that's ironic? They're talking to Jesus. Saying that the people went to the grave didn't see him. And yet they don't see him. Standing right in front of him is the one you're talking to. You're talking about. And they didn't even see him there. You know, a lot of times we want the miracle, it's the small details deviations in our life. But maybe that's what God really wants to talk to us. Maybe there's some things He needs to work out. Maybe there's some things He needs to do. Maybe you need to take a seven mile trip in the opposite direction of where the miracle was to happen in order for your eyes to be open. <laughs> then Jesus starts talking to them. Man, he says, you foolish man. <laughs> they still didn't get it. Verse 27, it says, He kept telling them about everything in the prophets and the preachers beforehand, Moses. You know, if God's not going to force His way into your life. But if you ever let Him in, He's going to stay there. And He's not going to leave. And he's going to keep telling you. You can do it. This is what I need you to do. Well, that, that, that work. They said that I, I was no good at that. My boss said I didn't have a talent for that. People, my friends, tell me that I need to give up on it. What did Jesus say? Now, a lot of times we want to get on Facebook and see what everybody else says. Let's do, let's do a poll. <coughs> some are good. Come on, some of them are good polls. Can I tell you about a couple of miracles? Is that okay? So we had some people in the church that wanted to get pregnant and have babies and they haven't been able to, even lost children before. It hadn't happened in their time. In January, the end of January, I think it was January 27th, I stood in this pulpit. And I said, this is the year. This is the year you'll have babies. This is the year God's going to do something for you. This is the year that what's inside of you, come on, is going to grow. Come on, this is the year it's going to happen. 
to know, is there anybody in here today that needs to re-up the relationship with God? Thank you. Maybe one time in your life you walked with Him and you said, you know what? I've not walked with Him in a while. Or maybe you never walked with Him at all. And you say, you know what? I want that relationship with God. Is there anybody else in here? Just raise your hand. I'm not going to have you come up. I'm not going to have you stand up. I just want to know who we're praying for this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these hands that are raised. I thank you that we're populated with heaven. I thank you that you're infiltrating hearts and changing hearts and changing who people are. Father, you're truly an amazing God. So would you guys pray this after me? Would everybody pray this and pray with the people that raise their hands and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I open my heart up and I believe in you. Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Lord, I love you and I praise you. Don't give me a hand clap. Hey, you guys have raised your hand. You should do something for me on that card that you filled out, or if you haven't filled one out, fill one out and just mark it for me, would you? Just so I can talk to you guys. I'd like to contact you this week and talk to you more about the decision that you made. And then if you would, everybody that's new that um, has a Connect card filled out, if y'all turn me in at the Connect spot, we've got a little gift for you. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming. We're getting ready to switch gears here. So we got a whole bunch of kids that want some candy. Come on with some eggs. Come on, Mel. So yeah. back behind here, we're fixing, to, we're fixing to open the curtains up. We're going to bring some tables out here. We've got uh, dinner out in the lobby. We've got some hot dogs and hugs. And I guess it's hot here. Come on. Come on. I got to I got, I put over on that one. That's all right. I love you guys. I thank you guys for coming. Y'all come in anywhere you just chose to come here. And uh, we love you guys. And we, you guys are welcome every Sunday morning, 10 30. And uh, so I'm just going to have to let our crew get up and go. Everybody, hey, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys. Like I said, you can get your kids, grab some food, and have tables in here. We'll have games for them to play uh, to get kids.